No, boys don't cry. Not crying, boys don't cry. If it's crying, I mean, if I cry in front of other men, they'll look at me as weak. At this point in time, I'm not comfortable with calling myself a hyper-masculine man uh, because of the passive nature that um, of being a man. And I'm not comfortable to be called someone who is responsible for the pressure of so many other people. I'm sorry, yeah. Um, my title of the book was um, on, on, on no, hashtag no homo, bitch niggas, um, bitch niggas, man hugs, etc. Um, society has society has this weird view, in my opinion, of what masculinity and what being a man is, in in that, from what I've seen when I was growing up, men and males are supposed to be these rough individuals who are so aggressive, who don't show their emotion. Yeah, the fact that man, men are portrayed in that way sort of has a stifling effect amongst ourselves. And I, I look at this in my friendships with other men. Um, you know, we, we all sort of hesitate to, to show each other affection without having to put that, you know, classic tag, no homo. You know, we, we, we feel the need to always defend our or protect our masculinity in a way. I, I remember in high school, um, before warming up, we'd used to play music, you know, and um, they'd play, our teammates would play, my teammates would play hip hop, they'd play kind of rap music, you know. And for me, as a person who stands for Beyonce, um, I would love to listen to Beyonce, suck myself up um, listening to her music. But because in that setting, um, it's a masculine, you're about to play a very masculine sport, um, you know, the whole camaraderie amongst men, you know, the very dominant kind of um, nature of those environment. I can't, I can't listen to Beyonce, I can't play Rihanna, you know, um, I can't dance in a certain way. And so you kind of have to navigate those spaces. You have to kind of guide yourself step by step. Oh, should I do this? Should I not do this? You know, and it's a constant um, internal conflict which you go through. When I was younger, literally at school, I, 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 at school, even now, I tend to be a very emotional person. And there was a time when literally, I think a teacher was trying to punish me or whatever. And then I cried and then she was like, why are you crying? And I was like, you cannot expect me not to cry. And she was like, no, boys don't cry. And I always don't get the line, boys don't cry. Because I'm like, at the end of the day, we're all human. We all feel emotions the same way. So I'm like, I don't get what the difference is. With masculinity and homophobia, it's basically when society says, or when certain individuals say, you don't fit my view of what a man should be. You should conform now. You shouldn't be like this. I really, really like collecting flowers. Like, I even took botany for some reason because I really, like, I love the aesthetics of flowers and how pretty they are. And most guys don't get that because I don't know why. I'm what people would call a metrosexual. You know, I like to take care of myself. I like to look good. I care about how I look. My parents, you know, I'm not afraid to just, you know, buy certain products, you know, for my skin or whatever it is. Um, I mean, I'll go to the spa, you know, something like that. Going to the spa, getting a pedicure, that's not manly in terms of what society deems manly. Um, you know, if it's crying, I mean, if I cry in front of other men, they'll look at me as weak, you know, they'll look at me as almost woman-like, you know, yeah. I think in an ideal world, being a man would be just being yourself, you know. Um, I think we can have masculinities, but I guess the difference is um, where they become very problematic and very violent is how we exercise them, you know? Are you dead? Really? You're lying. Lying, lying, did you just pose? <laughs> An item of clothing of mine which doesn't kind of live up to the gender norms would be my crop tops, because um, now I have two. Um, because men can't wear crop tops, right? Um, the crop tops are seen as um, I love clothing this crop for top. women, wow. only for women. Do you have another one? Do you have one? Um, but I also think in an ideal society, 
even the, the the term being a man, I think it kind of connotes something, you know, that someone has to be a certain way. We have to start moving away from categories which kind of impose um, a certain kind of identity, you know. I feel like, like I'm a free agent and I, for myself, should define what a man is and it doesn't have to be something that I overtly express or perform. It can be unspoken and like just allow me to decide what it is a man should be like and like stop telling me and imposing your ideas on me because it's not it's not a universal thing. We're all different, we're unique and I think we should embrace that. Often we think that what happens in our modern contemporary society um, or town or cities or whatever does not happen there in the rural areas. I think I don't like them to come to with that. I think obviously people like me, for example, are working towards deconstructing that within that very patriarchal, high masculine society. And you can see the unco how uncomfortable people become with that. My own dad is very uncomfortable with that. So you'll be like, why do you invest so much time in your books and aren't you going to play sport? That has been all my life. Or go to the gym while you're university. But I'm showing him that I'm not doing what you're saying. I'm not going to conform to what you, your values of a man are. So it's becoming uncomfortable with that. And I think if you, gradual, if you gradually increase how uncomfortable those men are, then you are actually um, doing some work there, definitely.